Hello, everyone, and welcome to the International Model Forest Network webinar series. On behalf of the Canadian Institute of Forestry, myself, Sharon Yan, Forest Science Program Coordinator, and Natasha Machado, Director of Programs and Initiatives, we will be providing IT and hosting services for today's webinar. Today is Thursday, March 28th, 2024. And this is the last session in the four-week webinar series. The CIF is very pleased to be partnering with the International Model Forest Network to host a series of webinars showing case different model forests. These sessions will explore each model forest mission, key initiatives, strategic plans, projects, and the results impacting uh, and the resulting impacts aiming to raise awareness about their significant contributions to audience in Canada and internationally. For today's session, we'll be featuring Carroll Watershed Model Forest, and we are pleased to have Christine Vale, who is working as a Watershed Development Officer in Carrollwood Watershed Model Forest, Boho, Philippines. She will be giving an exciting presentation titled Forest Landscape Restoration, Wildfire, Forest Fires, and Water Management Towards Resilience. With that, I will pass it over to Christine. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Um. Sorry. Okay, sorry. Okay. Sorry. Good evening, everyone. Again, um, by by the way, I am uh, Maria, uh, Maria Christine Valle from Karod Watershed Model Forest, uh, Bohol, Philippines. So actually, uh, my presentation, my uh, as a guest now, is uh, talking about forest landscape restoration, wild uh, wildfire forest fires, and water management towards resiliency here. Uh, as what we had practiced here in Karaod Watershed Model Forest. So, for information, for information, Karaod, okay, okay, can you see my slide? Okay, um, for, for just for information, this is actually the map of the Philippines. Uh, for, uh, for you all to know, where is Bohol? situated and where is Karod watershed situated so uh, this slide just show specifically where we are so in Karod watershed actually um, because Karod watershed is a huge area what we did is a modeling uh, a modeling um, site for the implementation of the project so um, Karod watershed uh, actually consisting of 25,000 more or less 25,000 hectares covering 10 municipalities with 73 barangays. So this is uh, what Karod watershed look like. So and this Karod watershed model forest is managed by the council. The council is composed of local government units, line agencies, um, people's organizations, the academ, who work together for the management, for uh, for sustainably manage the Karod Watershed Model Forest. So 
we have peoples um we have indigenous people also working with us we have the youth sector working with us in the council so it it, it is quite a big council working um all us the steward for the Karod Watershed Model Forest. So our strength for our organization is really the partnership, the collaboration, the performance, the teamwork among all those um players, all those agencies that works together. So as a matter of fact, uh, as commitments for these uh local government units is these LGUs are uh, contributing annually to the council, and this Karod Council uh, is a SEC registered. So the Karod Council itself is a non-government organization for working here. So uh, that is why, uh, because we are an NGO, non-government organization, we're able to top um, projects from different funders such as the FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization, the CIZ, uh, and projects also from uh, the govern some government of uh, from the national agencies in the Philippines. So, as priority threats for the counts for the uh, model forest is really we try to address the forest fire, the soil erosion issues, the and degradation, the flooding issues, the food sick and so as the food security. So. Because uh, this really, these threats really is needs to address to sustainably manage the Karod, uh, the Bondal Forest. So for our project, for our project on the forest landscape restoration mechanism here in Karod Watershed Model Forest, which is um uh managed by or um implemented by the Karod Council itself. So we had an agreement, um, a letter of agreement with the FAO uh, for the deliver a certain deliverables. So in our restoration, is we what we try to address is the forest fire, the soil erosion, and the livelihood of the local people, the community. So our specific del uh, deliverables of the project is the 450 uh, hectares assisted natural regeneration, 100, 108 hectares far line, 108 hectares cash crops are visible uh, production, enhancement of the ANR site by planting indigenous or agroforestry species, then strengthening through IECs. So these are the deliverables that really specific with our letter of agreement with the Food and Agriculture Organization. So. Our approaches is agroforestry, assisted natural regeneration, sloping agricultural land technology, conservation farming practices. So these are our approaches in the implementation of that project. Um, we try also in, in the implementation of the project is we try also um, to link, we try also to ensure that the, particip the participation of the women the female, the women sector in our model forest uh, will be strengthened. So uh, we try to elaborate how much women, how much female that uh, we are partnering with. So actually, um, in the implementation of our project, uh, what we did is that it is a, a family approach. So we, what we, we try to partner with the family uh, considering that this family is a member of the people organization. So the people organization should have um, um, identity. So they are they should be registered uh, to such an agency to ensure the sustainability of the implementation of the project. So that's our uh, the strategy also in the implementation of this project. So this is a, some uh, some example pictures taken uh, if you can see pictures here is uh, the ANR uh, site so as you uh, as you can see that there is a huge area here in Karod model forest uh, that is uh, still denuded so that we try what we that we need to uh, reforest it, to reforest to restore 
So, this is in the upland part of our watershed. So, as I mentioned that uh, because our approach is a per family, so we try to maximize that each family should have a maximum of at, for at least 5 hectares. So, it can be uh, less uh, in developing in the in as our partner for the uh, the project to deliver the, the specific deliverables that is stated in our letter of agreement so as commitment to this farmer uh, to ensure that uh, these uh, deliverables will be really um, delivered is we have also a separate uh, agreement between our organization and the farmer itself the family itself so uh so that uh what we try is uh it's a family approach so that um uh all for all the member of the family will be a uh, part in the in the cultivation in the delivering of uh the deliverables of the said agreement so so this is also the pictures that is taken during the implementation of our project. So, um, also before prior to the prepare uh, the preparation of the agreement is we try to um also include the capability building. So, we trained the farmers on the actual de the deliverables to ensure that these deliverables uh, are very clear to them. So we did capability building also to sustain uh, what we have started, at least to ensure that we really get their commitment. It is really their voluntary, the really, it is a voluntary for them to participate uh, in our pro in the project implementation. So this picture also, um, the picture below also uh, are the pictures taken during the training of the uh, during the training so the capability building that i mentioned so in the training it was designed uh, it is it was a two day training which consists um in the first day is it is more on theory and the second day is hands on so we go to the field uh and really uh, enact them what they're going to do in their specific area. So this is an example of the um, training orientation that we made for uh, during, uh, during the conduct of the training. So as you can see, and also part of the project, um, we try to, uh, this one, we try to purchase this soil uger to ensure that it, uh, the seedling should be planted properly because sometimes it is an issue that um, the hole is quite small compared to the seedling. So that is why to ensure really that uh, there, uh, the hole is quite big and well pulverized. So we try to purchase this one. This is the soil ogre. This one below shows really in the field. These are the, fami the head of the family that really our partners in the implementation of the project. So we try to have our training on site. So if where the project is located, uh, situated, so the training should be uh, in their area. Um, to, uh, also to it, so for them uh, to participate well. This one is, um, this is conducted also during our training on the pressing down of the cogon. So because the our approach in the in restoration in the restoration process is the assisted natural regeneration. So what we try to um uh we try to to locate first the generants then after locating the generants we press down the cogon considering that our area is cogonal. So, because we noticed based on our implementation of the project way uh, before that if the cogon will be pressed, so it is very hard. Uh, it will took time for them 
to um to have to rebirth to to have their strength but uh if it is cut down right after the day after you can see the sprout of the small um uh cogon right after so that is why uh, what we did is just to press this cogon repeatedly every six months to ensure that the regenerance that is uh, there will grow up um, and try to fertil uh, try to cultivate around the regenerance. This one shows the because as I mentioned in the earlier presentation that what we try to address is the forest fire. So in addressing the forest fire, we build up far lines in this far line this far line is a uh, 10 meter width uh so and this far line we try to convert this into a green a green uh a green barrier a green uh line so we encourage it is part of the agreement that they will be planting cash crops um high value crops uh fruit crops on the far line itself and the income for these uh, plants for the uh, fruit uh, for the cash crops that they planted is will be uh, given directly to the family itself that who is uh, that the one who tackle uh, to call, who cultivate in that far line so as you can see here this is uh, this the far line is planted with peanut uh, peanuts here is peanuts. Some they plant um, um, maize. Then some planted sweet potato. So the the variety of um root crops that will be planted on the far line will differ, will uh, will depend on the choice of the farmer, because it is them who will going to earn. Um, for the income, it's them who will going to have an income for the for those planted in the far line. So this one is um because in our project is it is uh assisted natural regeneration, at, but uh then at the same time enhancement of the ANR site. Because we know it is a, a denuded area. It is a huge area that very minimal um piece that you can see there. Uh, especially that uh we were we uh we uh, we were hit back then by the typhoon rye. So we try to collect uh agroforestry um species on indigenous species to the provincial government of Bohol. And also the LGUs also provide agroforestry species uh, to the farmer, uh, to our partner farmer. So we really encourage indigenous species in our um, project site, in our project area. This one um, features uh, during our IECs, our uh, awareness campaigns in barangay assemblies, um, during PO meetings, women's meetings, youth sector meetings, senior citizen meetings, and other sectoral meetings, we try to attend those meetings to ensure that uh, the information on the forest uh, landscape restoration that is implemented throughout the watershed uh, will be known to everybody. For them, uh, to, uh, that everybody is aware what we we did what in our intervention uh for the project so these are also the pictures taken during our meetings same as so there are lots of meetings uh, that we try to attend for information of uh, for dissemination purposes of the information because um one of our site is um planted by um peanuts in which uh there was a huge production of peanuts um we try to develop a livelihood enterprise to that specific to that area so we try to uh add, uh give a value adding to the peanut itself that was uh that they able to harvest so 
we um train these people so the our partner um our partners in the project for peanut butter processing so we try to process to process their peanuts into peanut butter for a, for a higher income of their um of their um for uh of their family so and after the training is um we gave them um equipment itself uh the equipment was turned over to the organization for sustainability and and to ensure that those equipment will be at uh, will be really utilized for its solely for the purpose so actually for based on the implementation of our projects uh the lessons learned we have is that the importance of community engagement and participation. So actually, prior to the implementation of our projects, uh, we already had the uh, uh, integrated watershed management plan. So it's in that plan, um, challenges were already identified, um, projects already identified, Interventions were already identified because prior to the creation of that plan, it is the stakeholders in the watershed uh, really work to make the plan. So we have a uh, what we call a grass footing. Um, it is really the PO who really identify the, their needs and the uh, interventions that will really address to the restoration. So... The other uh, lessons learned they had is the support of the uh, of the organization, the council, because the council is composed of LGUs. So the local government, uh, the member local government of the uh, organization are very supportive. So we can tap the municipal agriculture, uh, municipal agriculturist, uh, the municipal environment and natural uh, uh, natural officer so the officers in the lgus we can tap uh, them in the uh, along the implementation of the project and also uh, a long term planning and commitment to restoration effort so the other lessons learned is the importance of sorry the importance of using appropriate technologies and practices for restoration and the need to address the underlying causes of deforestation and land degradation. So because we have we had partner the community itself. So the underlying causes is really identified and it is really them who really uh identify the uh a possible interventions to address the restoration, to address to restore their the community, the environment. So the good practices we had is the working with the, we identified good practices alongside in the implementation of the project, which is the working with local communities in the implementation. So it is really them who really work on it for the for a commitment and sustainability. So it, it was not us who really, who, um, identified uh, their uh, needs, but it's them. So using also the uh, variety methods, so including the planting of trees, the introdu uh, introducing the uh, native species, the rehabilitate, uh, rehabilitating the degraded, uh, degraded ecosystems. The other good practices is the building capacity for sustainable forest management. And the monitoring and evaluation, uh, the, uh, in the restoration effort. So, building capacity really, um, uh, as uh, uh, after the implementation of the project is we know that project is only um project based. So, uh, if this project will not be sustained, then 
for us, we know that um we cannot see and there is no founder anymore who will going to fund on it because uh it is very impossible to have a project if uh the community itself will not sustain what had started. So uh as our good practice is we uh we really had a a good partnership with our community. As our innovations is we try to showcase the market uh creating markets for forest products such as timber, non-timber forest product to generate income for communities and incentivize restoration. Then also provide sustainable livelihood enterprise to the project uh, partners. Those are the innov innovations that we try to develop in the pro in our project implementation. So for sustainability of our project is um, restoration. We know that restoration efforts with other land land use activities such as um, agriculture and uh, forestry. Then we try to develop also sustainability plan for the restoration and um, investing in research and development to improve restoration method. Um, because as I mentioned, we have an academ uh, as member of the organization. So the academ itself really focus on the, res on the research um, continue in the research, invest on in the research and develop and try to develop, uh, improve our the restoration methods based also to the needs of the community. So for sustainability also is, uh, we, there are areas that are um, uh, what we call uh, timberland, which is uh, owned by the government. And we have areas also that is private land which is, there is a title issued to the certain individual. So those are private land. So we try to work on the two uh, different classification of land. But to ensure sustainability is, um, we, try, uh, we really get the commitment of the, uh, our partner household. So those are the interventions. Those are uh, the strategies that we develop, that we implement in the forest restoration project here in Karaod Motor uh, uh, Model Forest. Actually, uh, as uh, as it is a uh, through demonstration area because considering that we only have four hundred fifty hectares throughout in a. Uh, in a large area, considering 25,000 hectares. But uh, what we try is really to replicate what we had uh, started, to replicate and source out another another um, options, another source out um, some resources to, to ensure that um, our projects will rep uh, be replicated to other sites also. And uh, there are investors that will coming in. And also to for sustainability is we try uh we um uh strengthen the payment for environmental services here in Karaod Model Forest. We initially started the payment for environmental services and we try to strengthen it to sustain uh, the restoration project that we had started uh, in our area, in our model forest. Okay. For the water issue, because um, as I mentioned that uh, there are uh, three, uh, there are three priorities really that we try to address. And one of that is the flooding. So for flooding issue, so what we try to develop is a nature-based solution. Um, we put reservoirs, dams in the up upstream and the lows uh the and and also some part of in the downstream. Um, these dams and reservoirs, the water in this is 
um, utilized for irrigation, for domestic water, for water supply in cases of fire, while addressing the livelihood of the community in the area. So how we did uh, this, uh, the livelihood, how we incorporate the livelihood aspect in the establishment of this dam. So this is one of the example. There was a dam, there is a dam. Um, so this part here, this is part of our, our restoration site. This part here. There is a dam installed down in the gully. So this is a big dam. Um, this dam is cost um, 20 million, 25 million by given by the National Agency of the Philippines, so the Department of Agriculture. The relief for the irrigation purposes. So after this dam was established, um, there is a freshwater fish cage that was in place in the dam. So this is still in same area. This is the fish cage that uh the depart the uh age the government agent the national government agency of the Philippines funded. So this is a freshwater fish cage. So this is a freshwater um fish here. So um after the harvest after uh this fish cage is managed by the PO. Same PO that really manage in the restoration of this area. And this is this picture taken here is um the picture uh during their harvest time. So um we try to so in this uh in with this uh intervention with this strategy is we try to slow down the uh the the run of water because there is a reservoir if during rain especially that the uh this this area here it needs to be reforested so of course, con uh, considering the uh, huge area, so the run of water is fast. So there's a reservoir. And at the same time, we uh, incorporate the livelihood. So uh, it can lessen the amount of water that will go down, um, especially during um, heavy rain. So this is an example on how we did, how we try how we manage our our uh our the water the 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 water resources here um the other inter the other intervention so uh this is a huge dam um huge big amount of money for here the other intervention is we put small dams along the galley so this dam is more or less uh, can accumulate 450 uh, cubic uh, meter of water. So this is installed along the galleys of those, of this one, of these big ones. So the purpose of this reservoir is to, um, to collect water especially during heavy rains, uh, during rain. And also there are springs, there are um uh continuous supply of water, very uh just a minimal uh amount of water going here. So so that this water will be um will be accumulated here in this area. Then they put also a uh, freshwater uh, fish here so this small reservoir is um managed by the family uh which is um the member of the uh, po so they can really directly um earn the the family itself can directly really directly earn money from the reservoir itself so this reservoir is it cost here an in Philippine peso more or less seventy five thousand in Philippine peso. The 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 costing of each one of this. So this in um intervention, this also this activity, this project also will slow down the run of water. 
uh, going down to the uh, downstream. And also because um, the run of water is uh, accumulated during heavy rain, of course, uh, there are all, uh, minimal water really will, will go down, uh, especially during heavy, uh, heavy rains. So those are the interventions that we try to address uh, uh, for our water management. So before I will end my presentation, I want to share with you actually this video is already posted in the YouTube by the FAO. And this video is really taken in our site in our model forest for you to visualize uh, what our model or model forest look like. Uh, so I want to play, I will play this video for you.
Christine, sorry to interrupt you. Um, we realize there's some uh, voice included and in, sound included in this video, um, but I don't think you shared the sound when you were sharing this uh, the screen. Could you pause the video for a second? Okay. Actually, yeah, if ever um, you're not able to see, um, to able to hear those sound, um, maybe uh, you can um, see this video in the YouTube on forest landscape restoration in the Philippines by the FAO. So you can search uh, there and you can see this video there. It is, it is already uploaded. So okay so before i will uh actually before i will end uh so what is some uh somewhat uh the end part of my presentation so before i will end my presentation this um uh this is all i can say that uh in the rest it yeah, uh, it, it will took a long time in the restoration process. But uh in the restoration process is we try really try to partner with the uh with the community and also to address their livelihood um aspects, your their the income, their income because uh by addressing their income, uh we can ensure sustainability and we can sure we can ensure their commitment towards the restoration. Uh, and they understand really uh, what's what we are doing. So thank you and mabuhay. Thank you, Christine. Uh, if you have the video's uh, web link uh, handy, could you post that in the chat for our participants to see later? Yes. Thank you. Before we proceed to the Q&A session, we just have one poll for all the participants to fill out and I'm going to launch it now. So there are three questions in total. You may have to sc scroll down to see all the questions. Hey, uh, Christine, if you're yeah. ready, the yes. first question for you in the Q&A pod is, what is the long run benefit for the indigenous people which involved in the project? Because after several years, the tree will grow higher and the canopy will limit and the cover the grow of agriculture crops. Yeah, okay. So for the benefit in the uh, in the future because considering that uh we try to restore the area we try to really have to have a cover of uh uh forest cover in the area we know that there are commodities there are uh there are com uh actually uh commodities that will survive even in a forest itself like rattan so like uh the cacao because cacao is really um they, they need uh, somewhat shade the coffee so what we try to um uh uh inform the to our partner the indigenous people is that uh even that this area uh, will be fully covered, you can still have income out of this. We try to showcase them to the other area because there are areas also that already reforested. Uh, the, air, the area there, uh, the community there is still um, earning. And also, because we are an um, demonstration site, we have uh, agencies here in the Philippines that really help try to address the livelihood of the people. So we try to give them alternative livelihood also uh, in the future uh, that will really, for them to really appreciate, or for them have to have income at the same time, uh, let them understand what, what is really very important, what's the benefit of restoring the area. So 
uh, that the benefit of the restore of restoring the area is uh, equally equally important also to the livelihood itself. So that is why we have capability building training. We have I uh, information dissemination uh, for them for them to know that there is no such limitation for income if it is already reforested, it is already restored. Thank you, Christine. Uh, next okay. question for you is, can you explain what an a frame is and what it is used for? Yeah, actually an A frame, it is used in the soil conservation, what we call the soil technology, the sloping agriculture and land technology. Actually, A frame is it uh, we use it to look to locate the contour to to establish the contour because um we encourage them considering the the steepness of the area the 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 air uh, the area itself that it is uh somewhat hilly uh we introduce them to to conserve the soil at the same time um the water there is they have to prepare a contour um to that area that is why uh, uh, if you can see that the the hill itself there is a contour line so the a-frame is used to locate the contour because if the contour is not balanced then the 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 soil will also go down so um uh, so that in the future uh the contour band will become a terraces so uh the terraces it is a way of having that uh, sustainable, uh, somewhat uh, uh, a sustainable way to have an income to, to plant. Okay. Thank you, Christine. Next question for you is, what is the minimum number of hectares required to support a farming family? Actually, uh, a number of hectares is there's no such uh minimum what is important is that area will be called uh will be cultivated well so we only try to limit into five hectares to ensure that um because we have targets so to ensure that there is no such uh uh the because it is really well it is also impossible for a family to 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 cultivate a huge area so five hectares five hectares is somewhat um manageable for a family for a family of six to cultivate it um to support their family needs thirdly needs so it uh five hectares is a conservative figure really um uh, that we try to uh we try to uh prepare for them i think that's all the questions we received in the q a pod um if there are no more questions i would like to bring this session to a close thank you all for participating in today's webinar session and once again thank you very much to christine for this great presentation Bye, everyone.